Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo, Better Rides, Better Riders. Yamaha, snowmobiles built for the real world. That's the Yamaha Advantage. And by FXR Racing, world class outerwear. You know, I don't really get to ride in the mountains too often. It's usually at best twice a year, but most times I'm there just to test a new sled. I don't actually get to go out and experience what the mountains are all about. But this year, I got invited out to CKMP in Sycamus, BC. CKMP stands for Carl Kuster's Mountain Park, and I've heard lots about it. Um, I've been told that it's just an amazing place and it's got so much variation in riding terrain but I've never actually been there. So for me to go out and experience this is gonna be pretty cool. And it's nice that we get to stay within Canada too. Um, we don't ride in Canada all that often out in the mountains. It's usually somewhere in the US. So I'm excited to go out and see what BC has to offer. We landed in Kelowna and the drive up to Sycamus was about an hour and a half and it's absolutely beautiful country. I mean, it's just, just something you're not gonna see elsewhere. When you get to Sycamus, you're only about 45 minutes away from Revelstoke, BC, and these two areas kind of bridge together in the backcountry and are considered to be, you know, one of the best, if not the best riding area in all of the world for snowmobiling, snowboarding, and skiing. You know, a lot of snowmobilers probably have heard of Carl Kuster, but for those who haven't, I remember him personally back from the snowcross days. He raced in the pro class when I was in, uh, you know, semi-pro, but Carl's got a pretty big name. He raced with Blair Morgan, who is arguably the best snowcross racer of all time. From what I understand, his real passion is in the mountains. And a guy who, who can race that well, that has an even bigger passion for mountain riding, that's pretty cool. So I'm really excited to see what Carl does up in the mountains and what, what his facility offers. Are you getting old there, pal, or what's wrong? A guy with this kind of passion for something, when he's already amazing at snowcross racing, um, it should be pretty interesting to see what he has to offer. The shop at CKMP is pretty impressive. It's just shy of 5,000 square feet, and when we walked in, it's got tons of new iron sitting right on the floor. It's very pristine, and, and Carl's a pretty meticulous guy, and this place definitely shows that off. It's a cool facility. It's got everything you could ever need, and tons of cool sleds. I've always dreamt of that, having the shop or facility to house what we're doing here now, which is, you know, there's lots of demo rides going out of here, and there's some, um, you know, some instruction that we're doing as well for mountain riding. Skidoo plays a pretty integral role in CKMP, and I really like the entire company because no matter where you are in, whether it be the engineering people or the marketing people or the people in parts and accessories, they're all really passionate. And to me, that's really important, like from a manufacturer level, because they tr genuinely do care about the product, and they really do care about making sure that the, the other people have fun. You know, just like I want to see people have an uh, awesome time when they're riding in the mountains, they want to see me succeed at that as well. Or not just me, but they want to see the other people have the same feeling I do. We've got a fleet of about 10 sleds at CKMP, all brand new skidoos. All 800 ETEX, 154s, we've got lots of 163s, all have the newest and latest stuff, T-Motion, all the Flex Edge tracks. When people show up here, they ride our equipment. They come and ride it because it's uh, usually fresh and it's very well maintained and it's set up properly. The setup of the sled is just as important as knowing how to ride it, you know, to make you really progress. When we looked at buying a place too, it was important to us to have some place that always had good snow and usually with good snow comes good stability and that's, that's something that the Sycamore Revelstoke area has some of the most stable snow in North America. It really is a pretty special spot in the mountains because there's like, you can start to ride the trees at 5,000 feet and there's trees all the way to 7,500 feet. So when it's whiteout days or it's snowing lots early season, you know, or if avalanche condi conditions are high, 
you, there's always places to play here in the trees, like, and there's almost endless riding in the trees. It really offers the widest variety of riding there is. It's about uh, a 10 minute ride from the lodge shop to the uh, area we're going today, Eagles Pass. Once we land in the parking lot, it'll be about 20 minutes from there until we're right in the top of the Alpine. And at, at about the 15 minute mark on the ride, it's really good, really good tree riding, which is good for this kind of weather because, you know, lots of early season weather is like this, you know, December, January, February, it's usually lots of snow or if it's cloudy, you know, with all the burnt trees that are in Eagles Pass, there's so many, uh, so many pockets that are left untouched. You go there for 30 days in a row, and we have that, and you can get fresh snow every day. You know, even if it hasn't snowed in three weeks, there's always a stash somewhere. Morning, Jim. Good. How are you? You're you're in the spotlight now. Oh, neat. <laughs> How many we there got? One fifty four or one fifty. Looks like we're the only ones, huh? So far, yeah. So it's guaranteed powder? Oh, I think so. Right, yeah. <laughs> cool. Enjoy, guys. All right, thanks, yep. Jim. You know the thing about snowmobiling that keeps me going, or to make me want to do it every single day, is the fresh snow. When you go out there and it's all fresh snow, it's like, it's, uh, I don't know, if you were an artist, that'd be like a brand new canvas every day. Snowmobiling, I don't think there's anything that's more fun than snowmobiling in deep snow. When we got to the destination where we unload, you could see that the snow conditions were gonna be pretty good. There was fresh snow right there. Another rider who joined us on this trip was Rob Alford, who's a, a Skidoo ambassador, and he was gonna come out and help us to find the absolute best riding areas that we could, and uh, just help us to experience this backcountry adventure in the best way possible. One of the first areas we got to was the burn and there was actually really nice snow in there. And it's just huge areas of where trees have burnt from natural forest fires, but it creates an awesome riding area because you can see so far through the trees. When we got into the treed section, at the bottom of the hill you look up and you go, this is steep and you could tell it was deep because you could see areas that people had got stuck and you know, like really just dropped out the rear suspension and holes and you know this is gonna be interesting. We were riding uh, XM 163s with 800 E-Tex, so I knew I had power. The new line of Summits really does help to make it easier to ride all day. There's a lot of uh, technology that they put into that, you know, the T-Motion and the Flex Edge track and really being able to stand underneath the handlebars, that's one of the most important aspects of that sled. So when you're going to initiate a turn, you can just put your weight on there and just give it a little bit of throttle and literally, this is as hard as it is. That really is what makes the, the new line of Summits, or the XM chassis, so much easier than anything in the past to ride. AJ came down and showed him how to do some nice powder turns through there and weave in, in and out of the trees. I think at first he was probably a little skeptical with all the trees. It was just a ton of fun. I mean, there was so much powder here, just, just so much. And these 163s just grab a hold of that snow. And I mean, they just keep clawing and clawing.
you can kind of see where the trees are sparse right up above us here. So the trick is when you're coming down through those, don't think of it as a downhill and don't focus on the trees. Just think of it as an open field. So if we go up around here, you know, up the trail and then we'll sneak through the trees on the top. You can almost see there's a big natural S turn. You could come around way on the outside of it, split the middle of it or come below it. Carl was talking to me about how, yeah, we're gonna go up there and we're gonna come down that. And I'm looking at it going, um, yeah, you're gonna go up there and come down this, but I don't know about me. Pulled up to the top and I put a nice easy line in with some big lazy S turns. I felt like I had it pretty well dialed um, until he called me out onto the ledge where we were at, which I realized shortly after going onto the ledge, there was no returning from because that sled will not back up the hill we just came down. Hey Matt, you can tell Carl that this is just slightly steeper than the last hill. <laughs> Definitely need a pair of pampers right now. Alright, I'll give it a shot. It was so cool how these snowmobiles just knife in. I mean, you get your weight in that, that footrest area where you're right underneath the handlebar pole, you pull the sled on its side, and they just knife right into the snow. And it was just one of the most incredible feelings I've ever had on a mountain sled. I, my heart was beating right out of my chest. That was steeper than I expected when I looked over the edge. After going down, it was like, I want to do that again. That's way steeper than I've ever done, man. That's, I didn't want to do that, but I knew backing up wasn't an option. <laughs> I always wanted to show people, you know, what it was like to ride in the mountains. And if they have the right instruction, it's all really simple stuff, you know. It's just looking at lines and, you know, and knowing what the confidence and what the sled is going to do. And ultimately, I'd like to be able to help get new people into the sport. So when they come and get on the snowmobile for the first time and ride it in the mountains and then they get off and they're like, holy, I had no idea it was this easy. Snowmobiling to me, that's really pretty simple. I mean, it's deep snow in the mountains. I don't know, it's like having a hundred Christmases in a row right now. The mountains, that's where I was born to be. Every time I break into a new area and, and there's not another sled track or maybe even never even been a snowmobile or a person there before. You know, I really thrive on that and I enjoy that. This trip with CKMP and Carl Kuster in BC was all about the experience. This guy has incredible, incredible abilities in the mountains. I know why Carl lives here. I know why he eats, sleeps, and breathes, you know, this kind of riding. It's addictive. Snowmobiling, I don't think there's anything that's more fun 
than snowmobiling in deep snow. I'm already looking at the calendar for when I can get back there and take Luke back because this is the kind of place that you need to tell people you've ridden. This is, this is like nothing else. They say with age comes wisdom, or maybe I'm just getting old, it's hard to tell. But these days, I enjoy riding a lot more when I'm on a sled designed more for comfort than it is to look like a race sled. Sure, racy replica or hardcore performance sleds are great. I do still like them and I still like riding them. But if I had to choose what type of sled I'd prefer to ride all day, it would definitely be something like Articat's F1100 LXR. There really is no compromise here. Aside from mildly understated graphics, there's nothing I would want on a long day that this sled doesn't have. From its excellent mid-height windshield to its heated seat, all the way back to its tunnel-mounted storage bag, everything I'd want on a long day is standard equipment. And just as important is the long list of performance-inspired technology and geometry underneath the plastic. The F1100 is not a dull or numb handling touring-specific platform. Under all the cozy touring gadgets sits a full-on performance-minded chassis and suspension setup ready to impress even the hardest core rider. The Procross chassis is, for lack of a better term, a work of art. Its stamped and tipped tunnel is as impressive as it is functional. Its bulkhead and clutch braces are built with high performance in mind, and its wild-looking, ultra-tall spindles and long, widely spaced A-arms come right off Articat's race sled. It's hard not to see the performance heritage behind the LXR's underpinnings, but so often, too often, sleds like this one, originally built for performance but loaded with touring features, end up doing neither very well. Luckily for all of us, that's not the case with the LXR. By utilizing their ultra-plush slide-action skid frame out back, a set of Fox Zero Pro coilover shocks out front, and reasonably mild valving all the way around, Articat has managed to soften up the ride of the LXR to the point you might even call it mushy. Last season, even the softest settings on LXRs wasn't soft enough. This season, I can honestly say this sled rides really smooth. It's just a little bit stiff on the small stutters, but absorbs the medium to large hits without flinching and without sending the rider to the chiropractor. Under the hood lies Articat's highly underappreciated 1100cc two-cylinder four-stroke that puts out a below average, but more than adequate 125 horsepower. It's stout down low, but doesn't shift out very high on top. Still, excellent clutching takes full advantage of all 1100cc's of displacement, shifting out to a top speed hovering right around the C-note. I personally like this motor. I think it's ultra smooth, perfectly responsive, and it runs great. It's good on gas, runs clean, and is very reliable. It doesn't sound amazing, and it's not the fastest motor in its class, but all things considered, it possesses all the necessary attributes for a long and comfortable day on the snow. Ergonomically speaking, the new F and XF Articats are worlds beyond their predecessors. Wide soft seats, comfortable foot stirrups, and fully adjustable handlebars allowed any rider to find a comfortable seating position. Our only complaint in this department is the key panel directly in front of your knees. This area is convex in its shape, and if you're a forward rider like me who likes to hug the tank, it can interfere with my knee placement as I slide forward. I've had no trouble working around this and simply adjusting the way I move on the sled to avoid knee contact. But if the key panel area was more convex, it would allow more room and be a more comfortable shape for your knees. The 15 by 128 track is longer than your average 121, but shorter than a 136 and is actually a very nice compromise between the two. Its one inch lug is on the short side in my opinion, but the extra length seems to make up for the lack of lug in the traction department. Articat finished off the LXR package with a long list of additional features that really does make your riding experience that much easier. Electric start, push button reverse, a deluxe digital gauge, and 12 volt accessory outlets reaffirmed that the LXR package really does include everything you need. The more I ride year after year, the more I begin to realize that while on the surface I want people to think I'm a hardcore performance rider that throws all convenience and comfort to the wind in search of the most aggressive look I can get, the truth is, I want to be able to ride more often and I want to be able to ride more miles each day. Sleds like Articat's F1100 LXR provide all the amenities I need, combined with the performance and handling characteristics I want, proving that with sleds like this, there really is no compromise.
Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination Arctic Cat Share Our Passion Yamaha Snowmobiles built for the real world That's the Yamaha Advantage And by Go Ride Ontario There's no place like this